ResearchCalc is a web-based application for individual component design which provides engineers with an easy-to-use interface that allows for full control over inputs such as geometry and loading in addition to graphical and numerical results including robust detailed reports. In this video, we'll take a look at the Win Load Generator functionality in ResearchCalc. To begin, I'm going to go ahead and click Add Component and choose Win Load Generator. I'm going to go ahead and set up our settings. If we scroll down, we have options for using the ASCE 7-16 or the 7-10 code for the Win Load Generator. Next, in our general details on the right-hand side toolbar, we'll see that we have two wind load methods available to us. Either the main wind force resisting system method, which will be used for a building's structural components, or components and cladding, which would be used for a building's envelope components. Let's explore the main wind force resisting system first. We'll set our risk category, as well as our exposure category and wind speed. We can also go ahead and define our gust stiffness as either rigid or flexible. Setting gust stiffness to flexible will activate fundamental frequency and dampening ratio inputs. For this example, we will continue with a rigid method. Recent calc automatically sets the default factor to 0.85, but we can also choose custom to input our own value here. Now let's move to the Building Geometry Input tab. As its name suggests, we will enter our building geometry here and the graphical representation will update to show our input. For example, I'm going to lower my base elevation, see the graphics update in my base elevation. An important thing to note is the base elevation determines the height at which the base of the structure is assumed with respect to the ground which is assumed to be at zero feet. Therefore, any base elevation inputs must be less than zero feet. See the reported error message here when I enter a value greater than zero? Let's look at the height above base. The height above base sets the height of each floor diaphragm with respect to the base of the structure. The elevations must be in ascending order with the first floor as the lowest floor, such that each floor is higher than the floor prior and lower than the next floor. The length and width correspond to your floor's diaphragm dimensions. Now I'm going to add another floor. Again, I can change any of these floor's dimensions. I can also change the label name, so I'm going to change this topmost floor to just be called a roof, to correspond to my project floor naming. The mean roof height is automatically defined by the default summation of all our floor heights I've entered but I can also change this to custom and enter in my own mean roof height. The final tab here, site parameters, is where we'll input all our site factors determined from the applicable ASE code. Enter our topographic factors, K1, K2, K3, and these will be used to calculate the topographic factor, KZT. The ground elevation factor, KE, will only appear and can be modified when an ASCE 7-16 win code is selected. If I change the code to 7-10 in our settings, you see the factor option disappears. With our inputs finalized, we can go ahead and look at our detailed report. And so if I go ahead and expand this detailed report, we will see all of our properties as they've been calculated and our parameters that we've defined. This section displays all the initial properties for the main wind force resisting system wind method. The wind forces applied to each diaphragm are reported in this section. Let's now explore the components and cladding option in our new component. We'll set our risk category as well as our exposure category and wind speed the same as we did previously in the main wind force resisting systems wind load option. Next, we're going to move on to our Building Wind Input tab. We're going to enter our overall building geometry, our width, length, and mean roof height. The graphical canvas in this module is for diagram reference only. 
For the enclosure classification, we have the option to choose enclosed or partially enclosed. ResaCalc will use our choice here to determine the internal pressure coefficients used to calculate design pressures for roofs and walls. Roof profile has four different options. Our graphical canvas here will update the reference based on the profile we choose. I'm going to choose a monoslope and then I'm going to enter in my slope angle here. See how the graphical canvas has updated again? Next, we'll enter our values for the effective wind area for the walls and then the roof. These inputs will be used to determine the external pressure coefficients for wall and roof components. Again, in our site parameters, we will be using the same process to enter our applicable values we have determined from the ASC code sections. Finally, let's look at our detail report. The first section displays all the initial properties for the components and cleaning WID method. Down in the results section, you see our KZT factor, which was calculated using those site parameters set in our model input. Keep scrolling, we can see our wall and roof wind pressures. We can review the external pressure coefficients and our design pressures. If we want, we can go ahead and download this detail report just like we would with any other calculation in ResaCalc and include this in our calculation book. For more information about ResaCalc, including other available components and pricing, please visit resa.com.